collaborative. Now, not to throw a monkey wrench into your thinking, because all we've been talking about is 5G, 5G. Lino Vivas has asked a question about 6G. Um, and so he mentioned, and I'll throw it out to anybody, what are the limitations of 5G that 6G will address? Um, and so whoever would like to answer Lino's question, and thank you, Lino, for participating, uh, the floor is yours. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Miro. I can take a first step just because I've been participating in some of those discussions. Uh, again, I think it depends what you mean by 5G. You know, I, I think to a large extent, we have, you know, a lot of our discussion even here has, has really centered around what the formal definition uh, and, you know, the fact is that the adoption has been by all, you know, by all accounts slower, um, at, while at the same time, because of the pandemic, we have all been online massively more and it has become more, you know, again, through Wi-Fi, uh, a lot of software defined, um, a lot of software defined networking happening. So in the wireline systems, you see more of the software defined networking happening. Um, and really taking place. Um, it's, you know, there, there's been, as I said, a lot of push to not doing that. Um, but, you know, for reasonable commercial reasons, I mean, probably, you know, th these are companies, they're in the, they, you know, they, they need to be, uh, they, they need to be responsive to their, uh, to the shareholders. Um, but uh, the discussions around 6G, I think are really looking at, in a way, <laughs> really achieving those 5G desiderata. Uh, and I think that, you know, I was recently on, on a panel with some wonderful people, including Larry Peterson from Oran, you know, a lot of people think that basically, um, eventually though that you are going to have interoperability Again, a lot of pushback, a lot of not doing it from, from companies, but you are going to have that interoperability. Um, and then you're going to have uh, true virtualization and services. So I think that's that's really what um, uh, what uh, 6G is coming. You know, we haven't talked about machine learning and AI. Um, I sort of thought it would pop up, but you know, to some extent, right now, um, you know, if I had just a fantastic set of machine learning algorithms that could figure out uh, all the little pieces of spectrum that are out there that I could use, what would I do about it anyway? Right. right? You could. You'd create Tenji. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, you can tell me about all the opportunities I'm missing. You can give me fantastic algorithms, but because we haven't allowed the hetero true heterogeneous access, if anything, again, their embedded reason, their embed, their entrenched interests for not doing it, right? Yeah. What am I going to do about it, right? And, and so I think that maybe 6G to some extent is to say, well, you know, okay, this, this version, in this version of G, we were still working sort of uh, because we need, you know, the, the old amortization schedule of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> uh, of telecoms equipment, but, you know, maybe that's where it will really happen. I don't yeah, know. No. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I think for everybody that's listening on behalf of the Japan Society, I mean, we also have to remember, I'm writing a book actually on uh, the U.S. digital divide, which has some influence from our international, my international experiences. You know, there's some people who have, you know, 5G, it's very scanty in the United States. It's people who are still mostly on 4G LTE, 3G, 2G. And then there's some people who have no Gs um, that live in communities where there is no penetration of wireless access. So I do agree with you that I think as we have this conversation, really understand understanding the heterogeneity of the network, heterogeneity of the network, but also understanding that how we define it also becomes an entryway for the connectivity is really important. I want to ask this question, um, and this is to anybody. Uh, Zachary would like to know more specifically how 5G could be weaponized economically and militarily, and what are several anticipated potential outcomes? Um, so Zachary wants to know what are the specifics in terms of 5G's weaponization economically and militarily? Um, Elsa, Yuka, would one of you like to respond or Kazuo? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to speak to some of the uh, military applications under consideration. I think in terms of the weaponization, we've discussed the risks of attacks on critical infrastructure that could be devastating and uh, ways in which that, uh, that kind of uh, 
network access could be exploited in a, in a geopolitical flashpoint, for instance. But I think one uh, uh, interesting dimension of the conversation on 5G has been ways in which we're seeing multiple militaries around the world start to become more enthused about the about the benefits of leveraging that uh, that high speed uh, and increased connectivity for defense applications. And so something that I actually I saw the Ch Chinese military be among the first to start to uh, explore in earnest. And a lot of uh, this uh, can be uh, viewed in the context of China's national strategy of military civil fusion and efforts to try to promote dual use developments and uh, collaborations between the military and industry within with an aim to uh, starting to leverage uh, commercial advancements uh, within um, military networks. And in some, uh, in, in some respects, the applications that militaries are exploring are adaptations of those we'll also see in, uh, in uh, entry commercial employment. So for instance, a 5G enabled virtual reality can be used for training. And uh, the US military is exploring this. Uh, the, I think we'll expect uh, multiple militaries to see this as a important technique going forward as well. Uh, some of the practical applications of 5G in, in logistics, for instance, and enabling uh, with greater sensors and the capacity to uh, have better visibility, uh, whether in in sort of more, more mundane day-to-day uh, -day operations or on a future battlefield, that could be quite consequential as well. And I think another Another aspect of that that's starting to generate a lot of uh, a, a lot of initial uh, exploration would be how 5G could enhance command and control going forward, and what the Chinese military would call informatization or the development essentially of command information systems. If you're able to upgrade beyond today's legacy architectures and start to bring 5G into the mix, that is uh, terribly consequential when it comes to more distributed approaches to command and control as well as the potential to realize IoT on the battlefield or uh, applications of AI uh, go going forward uh, in an in, uh, in, in operational environment as well. So this is something where we're, uh, the Department of Defense is uh, within the United States is starting to uh, engage in more extensive experimentation, including at a number of bases and test facilities. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. And I think it does highlight that uh, 5G really is a general purpose technology. So it's hardly surprising to see that uh, that militaries would find such increased connectivity appealing as well, especially in an era where, where data and the capacity to leverage information, whether for situational awareness or command decision making, is viewed as a really critical competency uh, for, for the future battlefield. And while some of this may be more nascent in other respects, uh, starting to incorporate 5G into a military communications architecture, I think is a application we can expect to see whether uh, whether in more, more localized uh, environments or, uh, or or through uh, or against the backdrop of a continued expansion of national infrastructure going forward. Yeah. And I think, uh, the US military is also I think uh, uh, does face concerns when it thinks uh, thinks about the challenge of global communications and the ways in which uh, Huawei's presence in those networks that it depends upon for global protection of power could uh, could introduce sources of disruption in a crisis or conflict scenario. Yeah. So we have time, Kazoo. Kazoo, you want to respond real quickly? We, we're coming up against the, our hour. Oh yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I totally agree um, that I, I was hearing DoD seven or six hundred million uh, virtual reality. That's a really critical one. And um, but uh, every um, digital equipment can be weaponized. So that was also uh, discussed in the United Nations uh, area. Um, so how, how so 5G is kind of enabler for bad guys as well as good guys. So how we can uh, utilize well uh, the, the guidance as well as the um, sort of the um, safety net uh, for good um, purpose for civilization. That's an important perspective uh, going forth. You know, I want to thank everybody. Oh, go ahead, Yuka. I, I'm, we're catting up against the hour, so like three seconds before uh, Josh comes on and kicks me off. <laughs> Just very quick comment, um, actually, about so maybe from more from an economic perspective on why 5G security matters. I mean, like all networks, access, um, I mean, using untrusted network services will create some cybersecurity concerns, but the amount of data that fl flows in 5G is different. And I think that's the key of from the 
economic security perspective, why the security matters so much. Like, um, you know, I'm sure you've all heard of this word of data is like the oil of the 21st century. It's, you know, the source of innovation and, and wealth. So probably um, uh, um, the, that's why access to networks is such a concerning issue. Yeah, no, thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that participated in this discussion. This has been one of the most robust discussions that I've had in a long time around 5G technologies. Oftentimes, we're just talking about the infrastructure and the architecture. I think here, the combination of experts actually demonstrate just how important this topic is and how it's important to understand the different layering of that. Dan had a question just a moment ago about why am I seeing 5G on my phone versus 4G? Well, guess what, Dan? 5G is coming. It's not all there yet, but it's actually coming. 